Centroid theorem and construct centroid of a triangle. We're at 5.3a. That means we have four previous videos for chapter 5 that are in the geometry playlist. A median of a triangle is a segment whose endpoints are a vertex of a triangle and the opposite side at the midpoint. That's the median. And every triangle has three medians. Well, that makes sense. It's got three vertices, right? And there's three midpoints, so it has three medians. And the medians are concurrent. That means they meet at a point. They meet at the centroid. See? For the construction of a centroid of a triangle, we draw triangle ABC and construct the midpoints of segments AB, BC, and AC. If you remember how to do that, we take the point of the compass and we keep it at the same space measure, okay? And we make an arc with the point on A, then we put the point on B and we make another arc and where they intersect we draw a line and where that line intersects AB, that's the midpoint. We do the same thing for AC and BC. Then we draw segments AY from this vertex to that midpoint, BZ from this vertex to that midpoint, and CX from this vertex to that midpoint. So they go from a midpoint to a vertex, or you can say vertex to a midpoint. And we label the point where segments AY, BZ, and CX intersect as P. That's the centroid. And the centroid is closer to each side than it is to the vertex. If you look, P is closer to X, Y, and Z than it is to A, B, C, isn't it? And the point of concurrency, that's where they meet, the point of concurrency of the medians of a triangle is the centroid of the triangle. And the centroid is always inside the triangle. And it's also called the center of gravity because it's the point where a triangular region will balance. So here's the centroid theorem. And the centroid of a triangle is located two-thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if you look at AP, this is two-thirds of AY. And if you look at BP right here, that's two-thirds of BZ. And CP is two-thirds of CX. So here's the fun part. We can cut a triangle from cardboard. Don't use paper, it's too flimsy. Use cardboard. And balance the triangle's center on the tip of a pencil. Try to find that sweet spot where that triangle will stay balanced. And the point where it balances is the center of gravity. It's the centroid of the triangle. And we can use the centroid to find segment lengths in triangle ABC, ABC, AF, all the way across here is equal to 9, and GE is 2.4, so this little piece is 2.4. If we need to find AG, this portion right here, AG is 2 thirds of AF. Well, it already told us that AF is a 9, so 2 thirds of 9, we do 2 thirds times 9, that gives us 18 thirds. That means AG is equal to 6. We can find CE, that goes all the way across. CG is equal to two-thirds of CE, isn't it? That's the centroid theorem. And if we add CG plus GE, this little piece plus this little piece, it'll give us CE. That's the segment addition postulate. Well, two-thirds of CE plus this GE will equal the CE. We substitute two-thirds CE for CG, because see, that's what it equals. So we can substitute this for this. We can subtract 2 thirds CE from each side to solve for GE. This is eliminated, and we get GE is equal to 1 third CE. Because remember, there's an invisible 1 in front of the C there? When we take 2 thirds away, it's left with 1 third CE. Well, we know GE is equal to 2.4, don't we? So instead of GE, we'll substitute in 2.4. We'll say 2.4 is equal to 1 third CE. Now, what we can do is multiply both sides by 3 from that denominator down here. We multiply both sides by 3. This turns into a 3 over a 3, which is a 1. So we have 1 CE here. And we have 7.2 when we multiply those together. So we know CE is equal to 7.2. Okay? Natala wants to make a mobile with triangles. And the diagram shows one of the pieces. So we can see it here, and we can see the vertice 
coordinates. She needs to find the centroid so the triangle will be balanced horizontally when she puts the string through it. So when she puts a string through the triangle, she wants it to lay horizontally flat, each triangle. So she has to find the centroid of each triangle. So this is one of them. We could say it's like this one or something. And her answer will be the coordinates of the centroid. So she can use the location of each vertice. And we've got PQR vertices right here. And... The centroid is the point of intersection of the three medians. So to solve this, we're going to let M right here be the midpoint of QR, and we're going to let N be the midpoint of QP. So there's N. And L can be the midpoint of PR right here. Okay, sorry about the focus there. All right, so we've got, we find our midpoints, okay, and we can see where they meet. They meet at S, don't they? We use the midpoint formula to find those midpoints, and we use the coordinates. So if M is the midpoint of QR, we're going to use Q as X and Y sub 1, and R as X and Y sub 2, okay? So that is going to give us, using this midpoint formula, we add the first and second X to, and divide it by 2, and add the first and second Y and divide it by 2. So if we're using Q and R, we're going to add the first and second X, so we have a 0 plus 6, and then the first and second Y is an 8 plus 4, and they have to be divided by 2 for the midpoint formula. That gives us 6 over 2 for X and 12 over 2 for Y, which gives us a 3 for X and a 6 for Y. We do the same thing with N. N is the midpoint of QP. So we're going to use Q as X and Y sub 1, and P as X and Y sub 2. It's going to give us a 0 plus 3 divided by 2 and an 8 plus 0 divided by 2 which is 3 halves for x and 8 halves for y, which gives us a 1.5 for x and a 4 for y when we simplify it. Okay? Now, PM, if you look, is vertical. See it? PM. And look, RN is horizontal. See that? Well, PM is vertical. Its equation is x equals 3. And RN is horizontal. Its equation is y equals 4 because all of the x values here are going to be 3, and all of the y values here are going to be 4, okay? And the coordinates of the centroid are s for the point. We have 3 for x and 4 for y. So that's where our centroid is at point s right here, 3 for x, 4 for y, okay? Now the equation for ql is y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 8. So if you look at ql here, we can go from Q to S, because it's linear, and we can see from Q to S, it's sloping downwards to the right, so it's a negative slope. That's a negative 4 and then our, for our rise, and then our run is a 3 going across, so it's a negative 4 thirds slope. And the y-intercept is at 8. Q is at 8, 0 for x, 8 for y, okay? So that it intersects at x equals 3, which is 3, 4, 3, 4. 3 for x, 4 for y, okay? And then all her little pieces for her mobile will be horizontal and flat, and that's the spot where she'll put the string through it. Our next lesson is altitude of a triangle and finding the orthocenter. It's going to be 5.3b. So if you want to have some fun, cut out a piece of cardboard. Remember, paper's too flimsy. And try balancing it on pencil, seeing if you can find that sweet spot, that center of gravity, that centroid. Okay? I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. Bye.